everybody, and welcome back. Now, in this session, we're going to look at God's plan and promises about your physical health, the second of seven key areas. And let's begin this ver with this verse from the Bible, which says this, I pray that you may enjoy good health, that all may go well for you, even as your soul is getting along well. Now, that's from 3 John 1, 2. The Bible also says, I want you to be as physically healthy as you are spiritually healthy. Now, the truth is, we already know what to do about our physical health. It's not rocket science. You know, you need to get healthy. And in order to do that, you need to eat right. You need to eat less, exercise, get the proper amount of sleep, and work on ways to lower your stress level. We all know these things. It's nothing new. So what I want to do in today's session is to focus on the motivation for getting healthy and staying healthy. It's not just so you can look good or so you can feel good or other people will compliment you. There's much more important reasons for you to be healthy and it has eternal implications. The problem is for many Christians is that even God, when God tells us that he wants us to be healthy in our lives, we don't have the energy to do it because a lot of us are physically out of shape. God wants you to take care of your body, not only because that's where you live, but it's also where he lives. The Bible says he lives in us and he works through us. And anything that God's going to do in your life, he's going to do through your physical body. So if we're unhealthy and we're out of energy, then there's a lot that God cannot accomplish through us. This may be totally different motivation than what you've ever heard before about being fit and healthy, but what I want to do in this session is look at what God says about the importance of your body and your physical health. Today, we're going to see how physical health is actually a spiritual discipline. And just as we talked about in the first session, there are habits that you have to develop. But in order to develop these habits, you have to have the motivation and the correct motivation to do those things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, this is a classic passage. Right here, it says about the body in the scripture, it says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? So flee sexual immorality and other sins a person commits that are outside their body. But the one who sins sexually sins against their own body. It goes on to say that, Do you not know that your body is a temple? You know, you hear in society, my body is a temple. And that's more of a self-conceived a perception of what our bodies are for, but where does this come from? It comes from this passage in the scriptures. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? That's the rest of it. Who is in you? Whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Listen to this. You and I, we are not our own. You were bought at a price. In other words, Jesus paid for you on the cross. Therefore, he ends this passage, Paul does, on the body saying this, Therefore, honor God with your body. This passage and others in Scripture teach us six radical countercultural things about your body. Now, the first thing the Bible teaches us is this. My body is God's property. Underline that word, write it in there. My body is God's property. We're all taught growing up that my body is my own body and I'll do whatever I want with it. That's not the truth. It's my body, and we also say this, it's my body, I, if I wanna blow it, if I wanna waste it, if I want to mess it up, it's okay. Well, God says, no, no, that's not the truth. No, you won't, it's not your body. Everything you see in the world, everything you see in this life is created by God. And the creator owns it because he made it. You don't really own anything in your life, it's loaned to you and I by God. If you think about it, when you were born into the world, you didn't bring anything with you, and you're not going to take out anything in this world with you when you pass. It's just loaned to you for 60 or 80 or maybe 90 years that you live here on this planet, both spiritually and your physical body, your spiritual health and your physical body matter to God. And that leads us to the second radical truth the Bible teaches. In 1 Corinthians 6.12, it says here, God expects me to manage my body. Paul says it this way, I will not be mastered by anything. 
In other words, he says, I am responsible for the decisions I make about my health and my body. And he says, I am not to do anything to dominate my life or let those things dominate my life. Whether it's food, whether it's television, whether it's sex, whether it's drugs, whether it's a drink or anything else, he said, I can't blame anybody else if I mistreat it. Think about this. One day you are going to stand before God and he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? God is watching to see how you manage the gifts that he's given you. One of those gifts is your body. Now there's a third thing that the Bible teaches about your body. Right here. My body will be resurrected after I die. Now, right now you are in living in version 1.0 of you, the body you've got right now. The, in heaven, you're going to get version 2.0 because your body, the Bible says right here, your body will be a resurrected body. See, some people think when you get to heaven, you're going to be some kind of amorphous spirit just kind of floating around on a cloud. Other people have this idea that when you get to heaven, you're going you're to actually be like an angel. And you'll have wings and you'll be able to fly around. Well, let me tell you this, friends. You're not going to have wings in heaven. You're not going to walk around with a white robe. Angels are angels and people are people. The Bible says this. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Now, do you see how important your body is? Because God says, I'm not through with it. It's so important. You're not going to leave it. He says, I'm going to put it back together after you die, and after that, I'm going to resurrect it. It doesn't matter if it's decayed in the ground or even cremated. God says, I'm going to resurrect it and I'm going to put it back together in version 2.0 of you. Now, the God who created you is certainly able to recreate you, just as surely as he promises that he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Now, another radical truth that the Bible teaches is this. My body is connected to the body of Christ. In that passage we read earlier, verse 15, it says this, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? That's how God cares about how you treat your body. That's why he cares. It's, it's connected to his body, the body of Christ. Jesus gave his body for you, and he wants you to honor him with yours. Now, I'm not talking about overindulging in beauty products or a physical workout, or that everybody's supposed to go around and be some kind of muscular bodybuilder. No, this is not about vanity. There are those who can go to an extreme. It's simply about making the most of what you have by honoring God with the body that you've been given and representing Him well by being as healthy as you can be. It's about being a healthy part of the body of Christ. Now, we're moving into now our fifth radical truth that the Bible teaches about the body, and it's this. The Holy Spirit lives in my body. The Holy Spirit lives in my body. Wow! God put His Spirit in my body and in yours. That's why the Bible says your body is a temple. In verse 19, it goes on to say, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? That means God takes up residence inside of you when you put your faith in Christ. He puts his spirit inside your body. You become a temple of God. In verses 16 and 17, it says this, Don't you know you're God's temple? Don't you know that God's spirit lives in you? If we thought about that on a daily basis, if we made that a habit and we began to think, my body is a temple of God. Don't you think that we would treat our bodies differently? God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. God expects you and me to take care of his temple. Now, there's one more truth that we're going to address today. This is the sixth truth of the passage, and it's here. Jesus bought my body on the cross. It's found in verse 20. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, this is what the Bible says, honor God with your body. It doesn't say honor God with your spirit. 
It says, honor God with your body. Jesus paid for your real estate. If you want to know how much you're worth to God, you look at the cross. With the arms outstretched and nails pierced hands, Jesus says this, this is how much I love you. This is how valuable you are to me. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you came from. Jesus still died on the cross for you. And Jesus said, this is how much I love you. God has never made anybody that he doesn't love. Jesus says, I'd rather die than live without you. I came all the way from heaven to earth to do this for you. That's how valuable you are to me. And that's why he says, honor God with your body. So how do you do that? Paul answers that question for us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let's look at that verse. Paul says here, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. He doesn't say offer your spirit. He doesn't say offer your mind even. But instead, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. You know the problem with a living sacrifice? It can crawl right off the altar. And we do that all the time. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Did you know that taking care of your body is actually an act of worship? Now, you might be thinking, whoa, 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 wait a minute, time out, Pastor. You're telling me taking care of my body, taking care of my health is an act of worship? No, I'm telling you, I'm not telling you that. God is right here in Romans 12.1. When you take care of your body, you do it out of worship to God. You're doing it to please God. You're doing it out of gratitude for all that he's done for you. You're doing it so he can use you for his purposes and for his glory. In John chapter 5, Jesus met a man who had been very ill. He'd been sick for 38 years. And Jesus walks up to this guy and he asks him a very important question. He says this, do you want to get well? That's John chapter five, verse six. I have to pause a moment and say, wait a minute, you gotta be kidding me. This guy has been sick for three decades almost, nearly four. And for the first thing that Jesus asks him is, do you want to get well? Really? That's a profound question when you think about it. You would think, well, of course he wants to get well, but in essence, Jesus is really asking him, truly asking him this, do you really want to get well or do you just want to stay the same way you are in the sick body that you're in? That may be the question that Jesus wants to ask you today. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get healthy? A year from today, do you want to be in better shape, better physically healthy than you are today? Or are you just going to keep on being the out of shape person that you are? You know, sometimes you have to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I know that I personally want to get healthy. So why don't we make a commitment together to get in shape, to get healthy, and to work on this second key area of our lives? Because God says that your body matters to him as much as your spirit does. God wants you to be physically healthy so that you can accomplish great things for his kingdom. God bless in your conversations with your group today.